Hello YouTube and welcome to part 13 of our Realism Overhaul series. First thing we're going to do, want to do is load up our commsat and modify how much fuel is on board to remove that extra mass. So go ahead and head to the VAB and load it up. Uh, whenever I recorded this I wasn't aware that if I just flipped around the order that I put those struts on and instead of attaching the top of the strut to the satellite, attach the start of the truss to that fairing, that payload base there. Uh, I wouldn't have had to deal with that mass, uh, it would have just stayed on the the fairing, but uh, I didn't know that until now, so we'll just go ahead and do it like this for now. Just reduce our fuel and reattach this guy. Go ahead and grab our fairings and drop those back on. And it does want to attach. Let's put two of them on, there we go. And now let's just double check that staging, move that guy down to its own stage. Alright, I think that looks pretty good, so we'll go ahead and save this guy, and build him. Alright, we'll head over to the tracking station, and it looks like there's two contracts for us. There's a, there's a highly eccentric one that we can do, and then there's also one to uh, change the inclination of that one satellite, but I don't think we have enough Delta V for that, so I'll go ahead and head back to the Cape Canaveral. Uh, that big yellow one, though, it looks like he's in a centric retrograde orbit, so we might go ahead and see if um, if we could maybe can complete that one. Well, let's get out of that and head over here. Let's find that contract. There it is. Scan. Um, what do they stand for? Scientific Committee on Advanced Navigation. They want us to put this in ammonia orbit. Uh, that's actually Russian for lightning. So we need an orbital perturbation sensor, film return camera, barometer, but that should pay us a pretty good amount, uh, over 100,000 credits if we take that, so we'll do that. And let's start working on a rocket that can build this. All right, I'm gonna speed through my build here, otherwise you'd be sitting here forever. This is gonna be a four-stage rocket. The final stage is is going to consist of the required science equipment, including that big old camera, an agenda guidance unit with some solar panels, and we'll use two 2 kilonewton thrusters powered by hydrazine. We'll go ahead and throw on a decoupler to the bottom of that, and now we're going to add an AJ-10 engine with enough fuel for a five minute burn time for our third stage. Below that we'll drop a payload fairing, and we're going to unlock the LR-91 engine for our secondary stage. We added enough fuel for 3 minutes and 45 seconds of burn time. Now we're hitting mass limitations, so I'm going to add a guidance unit on top of that and mess with some decouplers. Now I'm going to grab an interstage fairing and throw that on the bottom of this engine. And I'm going to look at these engines. I have two choices, the LR89 and 79. I went with the 89 because it seemed to be lighter. The rest of the stats looked seemed to be the same, uh, except the burn time seemed to be different. Um, the LR-89 didn't seem to burn as long, but I'm going to see what happens if I push the envelope with that. I'm going to add my fairings, uh, make some position adjustments, go ahead and add my stability clamps, adjust my staging, and we'll bring this whole rocket down so it's at the right height. And the next letter is E, so we're going to call this the Echo, and save and build this guy. As we work to completion, we see that we're going to unlock improved instrumentation. That's probably going to help us later. Let's go ahead and finish building this guy. And then we'll go ahead and roll him out to the launch pad. And now we'll go for launch. Now we're going to use the map and line ourselves up for our intended orbit. Depending on which side I, of the orbit I'm on, I either need to launch northwest or southwest. And since I don't like the idea of my boosters falling into the continental US, I'll pick southwest. So we'll warp over here, and then hopefully our boosters will like miss Cuba and Central America. All right, let's, uh, it looks pretty close to lined up. You can see our ascending and descending nodes kind of center around our launch site. The closer those get, the closer we are to our launch window. Looks like I missed some staging, so we're going to fix that around. And I also need to turn on the fuel pumps for these launch clamps. That way, whenever our engines are spooling out, they're not actually using fuel from our main rocket. Turn that guy on. And lock 
to the heading we want. I think 225 is probably pretty good. And now let's launch this. You can see I sped this up as well. We'll go ahead and start our gravity turn. And so far so good. I don't know how long those engines are going to last. Sure enough, there goes one. Now the others are burning out. And all right, that's not good because we still have another like 1400 meters per second of Delta V on that main stage. So that's a lot of fuel we didn't get to burn, which is probably going to impact uh, our ability to achieve this mission. Second stage seems to be going pretty well though. Just doing some pitch management to kind of get to a good altitude to circularize. Alright, as this finishes up, we'll fire the AJ-10. And I'll go ahead and extend my antenna. This part's pretty uneventful, just a five minute long burn. Trying to manage my vertical speed there right now. I'm falling at 160 or 170 meters per second, so hopefully that starts going up. Alright, that looks like it turned around, but now we have some performance loss on that AJ 10, so that's not very good. Alright, it burned out with 250 meters per second left, so we're up to almost 2,000 meters per second that we didn't get out of this. So I'm going to just sort of play some recovery and see if we can at least just get this guy into a low earth orbit by using those two kilonewton, those two, two kilonewton thrusters on the side. All right. Now I raise my apoapsis, so I'll cruise up here and then just do a little burn prograde. And now we only have 1200 meters per second at Delta V. So I don't think that's going to be enough to really complete this mission. So it's probably best to head back to the drawing board and swap out those LR-87s, or sorry, LR-89s with the LR-79s mm -hmm. uh, since they have that, that longer rated burn time. It gives us like another 30 seconds before we should start having to worry about failures. So we'll go in here and load up the Echo. And let's scroll down to the bottom and take off those engines. And now we need to unlock the LR-79s. All right, and we'll try to attach those to the bottom there. We'll do four times symmetry again. That's probably a good time to compare this with the Delta. The Delta was 170 tons, uh, stood nearly 25 meters tall, and with all four boosters produced uh, nearly 2,000 kilonewtons of thrust, so two meganewtons. Uh, the boosters were putting out uh, 1,720 kilonewtons of that. The Echo, on the other hand, is heavier, 235 tons, stands nearly 43 meters tall, so almost twice as tall, and puts out 2,668 kilonewtons of thrust at sea level. So it's about uh, one and a half times as powerful as the Delta and twice as tall, so it, it dwarfs it. All right, so we switched back over to our portal launch site, and now we're going to go ahead and launch our second commsat. Uh, the boosters worked fine. We'll see that they separate pretty soon here. I'm, I'm speeding through this one as well. Do a little roll maneuver. And my goal is to pass the 45 degree mark whenever my surface speed is around 1,000 meters per second, so that looked pretty good. Go ahead and separate our boosters. And drop our payload fairing and extend those antennas. I started looking at contracts and I then went back and noticed that we had a performance loss in that engine. So hopefully it doesn't impact us too much. 
it will extend the burn time of this engine, so we, we risk failures later on. Looks like so far we're getting through it, though. But we it died with about 700 meters per second of delta V left, so that kind of stinks. We'll see what we can do to salvage this, though. We'll use our AJ-10 and try to get us into low Earth orbit. And from there we can burn at the equator like we did before to raise our apoapsis up to our target of 3 million meters. So here I'm just kind of man managing my vertical speed as I circularize. Alright, that looks good. Now we'll warp down to the equator. We are and now we'll do a little prograde burn. Alright, we're gonna time warp a few times around to get us lined up with that other satellite. That looks pretty good. Now I need to move some electric charge over. It's not letting me do it. So I tried reverting the space center, reloading it, and there we go. Now we got our electric charge moved over. Can do a prograde burn, we'll raise it up a bit, and we save some fuel for a deorbit burn. So we deorbited this, and now we're going to switch back to our comsat. But I forgot during my prograde burn to do any sort of inclination change. Uh, now this guy only has 545 meters per second at delta V on the little satellite, so I don't know if that's going to be enough to raise our periapsis up the extra 1 million meters that we need and do an inclination change. So Gonna give it my best shot here, but we're gonna see that we're just gonna fall short a few degrees. Actually, not a few degrees, but a few uh, tenths of a degree. This would actually probably be close enough for the contract, but I don't think we were circular enough, and we were gonna get out of sync with our other satellite, so I think we're gonna call that one a failure. All right, we'll head back to the VAB load up our remote tech comsat rocket and we'll go ahead and build this guy we'll leave here and now we gotta head back to Cape Canaveral to check on that other rocket that we we're building so go to the tracking station load this up and we'll time warp to completion here and now I'm gonna go back to the tracking station and try to get closer to our launch window so it's not just sitting on the launch pad and I want to do it on this side again, so we burn out over the Gulf of Mexico and then towards the Pacific Ocean. Otherwise, we're going to be dropping our boosters in the middle of the United States, which is frowned upon. Go ahead and launch this. Set up my parameters, and we're launching. Alright, this is probably a good time for me to give you a little bit of history about this orbit. Uh, this orbit was used a lot to provide communication satellites to northern latitudes, um, at least the way that it was done in real life, not this one in particular. This would be good for southern latitudes. Um, they had an orbital period of half a sidereal day, were highly eccentric, and had an augment of periapsis of 90 degrees. So what that means is that the perige perigee of the orbit was 9 degrees off of the ascending node. So in this case, that what we're doing here is that when it's, it's when it's at its northernmost point in its orbit. Uh, the real times that they did that for like Russian stuff, it's whenever it was at the southernmost point of its orbit. In this case, our orbital inclination is 116.6 degrees, which is actually 180 degrees off of what a normal orbit would have been. Um, so that's why this one's actually a retrograde orbit. For communication satellite, I think that you would want a prograde orbit as it stays in your area of the sky longer, but that's what this contract asks for, so that's what we're going to do. Alright, we're working on circularizing, checking my contracts as usual to see if there's any like science in space or anything, but I didn't see anything there. Alright, we have our second stage burnout, and now our AJ-10 is going to work to circularize us. So far we have no failures, so that's pretty good. And again, I'm just keeping an eye on that vertical speed, trying to make sure it doesn't fall too much, just by adjusting my pitch. This is looking pretty good. 
slowly pitch down as that gets closer and closer to zero. All right, now we've circularized. So now I'm going to perform a series of prograde burns right around our desired periapsis. So I'm going to line up for our first burn here. And that's actually a little bit late, especially since I need to spin this around. But uh, we'll go ahead and kick it up a little bit. And I'll go ahead and warp around and finish that one off with my AJ-10. So this is a little better. I'm going to save a little bit of fuel on this guy to deorbit. We won't need much since our periapsis is already pretty low, but I'll save 80 meters per second. So we'll go ahead and spin around to the other side of the our orbit here and since this doesn't have a guidance unit I'm gonna have to actually uh, deorbit the whole satellite but I'll go ahead and spin around decouple and then we'll re-raise my periapsis using those two kilonewton thrusters that should be good we don't need to worry about skimming the atmosphere and now this part's pretty boring but we're just gonna uh, perform a series of prograde burns and slowly raise up that apoapsis well, you'll do roughly about three minute burns here. I think we're going to need to do at least one or two more to raise it up to the desired altitude. Alright, we're going to go in for another one here. And we started uh, about a minute and 30 seconds out from the periapsis. And you can see whenever we burn early, it kind of moves the periapsis towards us. And then as we pass it, it kind of draws it back. So we're, I'm trying to keep it centered right around the target, which you can see there in yellow. All right, looks like we're gonna need at least one more. I'm gonna actually see if this is high enough to do any high space science, but it's not yet. So go ahead and whoop. See, I got trigger happy with time warp, so I passed that. But here we go, another minute 30 seconds, we'll start burning prograde again. You can see the periapsis marker draw closer to us. And then as we pass it, it'll again be pulled along with us. And I should be able to get my apoapsis up to 40 million meters on this pass. That's about what they wanted. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and do a little inclination change right over here. I think that's my, yeah, my descending node. It's, it's pretty close, but I'll try to fine tune it. And now I'm gonna take this opportunity to really fine tune the periapsis. So I think we need it around 147. And I was gonna warp back around and raise my apoapsis again, but that actually was enough to complete the contract. So here I'll go ahead and collect some science now that I am high in space. Rename this guy and we'll head back to the Space Center. I'm wondering if the Echo Rocket has the capacity to get something to the moon, but we'll have to find that out later. Until then, see you next time.